YouTube. My name is John Jagsby, and today we are talking about buying or building a new PC specifically for video editing or motion graphics. I just built a new PC myself and I am in love with it, but when I was doing it, I had to keep in mind a couple of things so that I could get the most out of the components I purchased. So without further ado, let's dive right into a couple of the components I purchased and why I purchased them, and hopefully you can take away something when you're building your next machine. All right, so first thing is first, the processor. The processor is the brain of the computer. It is the thing that does the math and the things you can create cool videos and put on some cool effects and whatever else. I picked up the i9-9900K and it is a fabulous processor. 3.6 gigahertz processing speed with eight cores and 16 threads. When purchasing a video editing processor, keep an eye on the number of cores because each core is responsible for handling calculations when you are doing computer things like video editing or watching cats memes. So the core, the processor is responsible for just running the computer, having more cores means you can do more calculations, which means the computer should run faster. Obviously it depends on the speed of the processor as well. If I recall correctly, correctly, 3.6 gigahertz, so multiply that by a thousand, that's 3,600 calculations per core per second. So that's pretty fast. So all in all, focus on the number of cores and how fast the processor is when purchasing for video editing. Oh, and before I forget, cooling. So cooling for your CPU is very important because you don't want your computer to melt. So make sure you don't forget that. A lot of the time, the stock heat sink that comes with the CPU is not very powerful and you might see some higher temperatures. So I recommend maybe investing in another heat sink for your CPU. I picked up the Corsair Hydro Series RGB 280 millimeter fan one because RGB is cool and it looks pretty and all that jazz. Plus it is water cooling so it is going to do a good job with heating or stopping from my CPU from getting heated or cooling. So cooling is important, make sure you invest in that. Okay, next we have the graphics card and the graphics card is becoming more and more important as software develops because new effects and plugins are becoming GPU accelerated as in they use the GPU. So having a good graphics card will increase the speed in which your previews load or your renders actually finish rendering along with being able to use some GPU accelerated effects as in the graphics card handles the processing for some effects that the processor might not do otherwise. You might see that in the immersive video in Premiere and then there's some other third party plugins. My personal favorite being the Red Giant Suite, Trap Code in particular. Anyways, Trap Code Suite will use the GPU in some fashion so having a good graphics card is important. When looking to buy a graphics card, look at the video RAM, especially if you're doing 3D stuff, and the number of cores. I picked up the 2080 Ti Founders Edition because it has 12 gigabytes of video RAM and 4,300 cores, if I recall correctly. 4,352, so a lot of cores, which is useful for video editing, more calculations can happen for visual processing and also the video RAM will allow me to do more 3D stuff. If you're looking to buy a heavy duty graphics card and do 3D stuff, that would be a good match. Anyways, moving on to the next portion, storage and RAM. Okay, next we have RAM, random access memory. Think of it like this. Your brain has long-term memory and short-term memory. Your long-term memory is like your hard drive. So. Basically all the things like remembering your 10th birthday, or if you are 10, remembering your fifth birthday, those sort of things. Your short-term memory is whatever that you need to use immediately. Same principle applies to your computer and having a decent amount of RAM will be helpful for video editing. General rule of thumb is to have about 32 gigs of RAM if you're doing 4K editing or have 16 gigs of RAM if you are doing HD 1920 by 1080. I'm gonna to add to that rule of thumb and say, if you're doing more advanced motion graphics, having 32 gigabytes or more would be very helpful if you're doing 
fancy expressions or a lot of compositing in After Effects, having more RAM would be very useful. Okay, next is storage. Storage is also very important because you gotta store your footage somewhere. So you have three options. You have solid state, PCI solid state, and mechanical. We'll start with the solid state. They are typically faster, but they also are smaller in capacity and more expensive. So typically what you would use it for is putting your operating system on and running your applications like the Adobe Suite and some games if you want the game to run faster like Civ or Battlefield or whatever. So solid state drives, smaller in capacity, faster, more expensive, use them for very key things. Then your mechanical hard drive could be used for your footage or I recommend, that's what I do. I picked up two of the Western Digital two terabyte hard drives. So I have four terabytes total, but I am running something called a RAID 1. And what that is, it's a system where I am duplicating the files on each hard drive. So if one of them dies, I still have a backup just in case. So it, I don't wanna lose my footage. That's the whole point of a RAID 1. You have a backup and you're safe and make sure you don't lose your files. So when it comes to storage, I recommend using a solid state drive for your operating system and your applications, and then a mechanical hard drive for your footage. I picked up the HyperX Savage solid state drive, and like I said, the Western Digital running in RAID 1. Okay, next is the power supply. It runs things, it, it's a big metal brick that makes electricity and makes things do things. I picked up the EVGA Supernova 1200 watt power supply. I have a lot of power because I hope to upgrade one day to a second graphics card, but for right now, it suits my needs. When you are purchasing your power supply, look at your processor wattage requirements and your GPU wattage requirements so that you are not, not powering those components. Otherwise, it won't work. Power supplies are important. I also kind of do recommend spending a little bit more so you can future proof, but again, whatever fits in your budget is what you can fit. So there you go. And last but not least, the motherboard. This is the component where all the components are going to live. Your CPU, your RAM, your GPU, every hard drive or your optical drives are gonna plug into your motherboard. So. Keep in mind when you are purchasing your components that your motherboard is going to be compatible with those components. So for example, your processor will have a socket type. The i9-9900K has an 1151 socket type, so it will not work on another motherboard. Same thing with the RAM. Sometimes motherboards do not support DDR4 RAM and only support DDR3. So if you're picking up a DDR3 motherboard, but you have DDR4 RAM, it might not work. So make sure that your motherboard is compatible with your components. And that's it from a technical standpoint. I wanted to give you guys my thought process and what I was thinking about when I was building this new machine. I really wanted to focus on video editing and motion graphics, so I knew I was gonna spend most of my budget on my processor, my graphics card, and my RAM. All in all, I really enjoy my new machine, and it's significantly improved my workflow, and I really hope that what we talked about today will help you with purchasing your next machine so you can edit faster, produce more content, be more creative, and do more fun video things. That's it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really do appreciate it. If it was helpful, let me know in the comments, or if you have questions, please feel free to let me know, and I'd be happy to help out wherever I can. Until next time, my name is John Jagsney. I appreciate you, and I will see you in that next video. Bye.